Hello, my beautiful sluggies. It has been so amazing to perform for you. I can't wait to see more of you and meet more of you. Please come see me at Mil the Milwaukee Improv this coming weekend. You can then see me at uh, the Zanies in Chicago on September 7th and 8th. You can see me at the Cleveland Hilarities September 9th through 11th. Then I'll be at uh, Riley, Rayleigh, North Carolina at Goodnight September 23rd to through 25th. Come teach me how to say it. Um, I'm also going to be at the fest at a festival in Vegas that I can't remember the name of it, but Billie Eilish is going to be there. Life but it's beautiful. Life is Beautiful Festival uh, on the six, the 18th and 19th. That was sloppy, and also the wig will be explained. Hi, slugs! What a crazy episode this is about to be. Like. I'm so scared for what didn't get edited out. If it's not, if this episode is more than five minutes, I'm f Um, You guys, I'm coming on tour this fall. I have all my dates in one place, esteronice.com, which apparently means I'm on meth and everyone, no one told me. I just thought it was funny because Disney on ice, esteronice.com, Florida. Uh, my brain goes to you being a corpse, honestly. Oh, but no one else's else. brain goes to like ice skating Maybe. shows. No, Esther, we're grown ups. <laughs> <laughs> we're grown people. Today's episode is a mess. No, today's episode was absolutely beautiful. Sleepover by Esther.com for wonderful handmade garments. I'll see you in hell. And mine were really messy. So I'm going to say also go to AnnieLetterman.com for the tour dates. And also, this wig is a precursor to one, a great episode, and two, a calendar I'm coming out with that's going to be really awesome. You can find all my merch at AnnieLetterman.com too. I this think goth. goth to me, I, I don't, like to me, you guys are more like, we're like Wiccan to me. Crossover. It's You're... a crossover. You read emo. You okay. Read, you read emo, which is sort of like baby goth. You look like regular, like you could just wear this. It works. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's. I feel like I went for like high school girl goth. Yeah. Because that's what I know. That's what I think of when I think of goth is like high school girls. But your high school girl goths were probably like in theater with you. No, Like no, they no, were able no, to no. take the makeup off. No, no, no. My you have goths us all wrong. lived the life, okay? <laughs> they went hard. Yeah. Now, Kalila, you thought gluing on your top lashes was hard. Try gluing on the bottom, bitches. <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, what? I oh. went, I honestly, Esther, I thought I was going to look like second. I thought you were going to come in like uh, Trisha Paytas. Well, like also, I got added to this episode late. Like, because remember, this was supposed to be a guest. Right. How right. funny is it to put it, make a guest be goth? Goth. <laughs> Just force them. I'm you know what? Chris Stefano as goth. Yeah. We almost had Chris Stefano as goth. Wait, Annie, I want to know about these contacts what country did you order them from? i am assuming china with how no offense uh with how chintzy they were and that's not a china attack it's that's you make the cheapest products okay that's why you have so much money and power but um jules was trying to show me how to put contacts in and i was like jules your contacts are like real contacts these are like paper thin they've fallen in the toilet several times like both of them wanted to just match wait in one the of those was in the guy. toilet and then went to your eye it was worse than in the toilet no it was on the toilet Oh, that is worse. In the toilet, there's some water washing yeah. around. My no, house, I, I think, in the eye. toilet would be worse if you're at my house. Because that's where you were born? <laughs> that's where you were delivered? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed you guys. I feel like I haven't seen you in so long. I love you. this How's hair. How's this munchkin head doing? I, I want this hair color so bad. It Wait. reminds me of Ozzy Osbourne. When on the Osbournes, Ozzy had like just the bottom half of his hair dyed a color like that. And I've no, always wanted I don't want to say I was going for Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> um, but I'll take it. Um, it's coming from Forever Dave Grohl. I told you, did I tell him this when I was trying to get a picture of Dave Grohl for you? And Whitney was like, get away from him. She like wanted me nowhere You're near like, him. You're like, I don't even care about Dave Grohl. This is I was is like, this Esther. is literally for Esther. I was going to tag her in it. What's a celebrity where um, who you absolutely needed to get a photo with and broke your own rules of It was Jeff Probst. Cool. I've been through this so much. It's so it's so much more embarrassing than... What about you, Esther? Has there, you know, well, in LA, we're never, we're never supposed to take pictures with anyone, right? Well, there was a story when Annie, I made Annie get the photo for me. <laughs> We're at LAX and we saw Jordan Woods, who's Kylie Jenner's best friend. And this was like the height of Kylie <laughs> and the height of Jordan Woods. And I was like, Annie, I, I think that's Jordan Woods. Like, but I can't. I can't and I if can't. it's for someone else, I'm yeah. surely willing to. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And she's like, what? Okay, who? Where? And so she And I had up. no clue who she was, too. You're like, 
and I, I think I told you, go say, are you Kylie's best friend? And you did. And she's like, yeah. And then I got my picture. You got your picture. You didn't like the picture enough to post it when, the, I was, trauma, when the drama came out. I was like, you should post Team Jordan. I was not. Are you enough. not Team Jordan? No, I don't have teams for the K Kardashian stuff. I'm just not that invested. I we're just, Team Skims. I buy the products. <laughs> we're not invested as in we're not investing in this company we're spending so much money on, <laughs> which we probably should try to. <sighs> yeah, financially invested, not emotionally. <laughs> What? I feel like I have a million questions. How was New ask. York? It was really fun. But I'm so glad I don't live there. Guys living in New York, what are you doing? Why are you in, Why are you suffering? <laughs> What's going on? What's the suffering part? The, it's everything. It's it's the swamp ass. Like when you're in LA, you can- you But can, I feel like you mention swamp ass everywhere you go. You have that. Like I feel like that you went okay, to Okay, but I'll say, okay, Austin, there was swamp ass too. <laughs> well, because we live in a, dry, a nice dry heat. I don't feel humid. Oh, I hate this dry heat. I hate I it too. I prefer swamp ass Well, wait until you're back in it, bitch. Well, I grew up in the Philippines, so it's familiar to me. And my skin, my eczema flares up in dry weather. I look so beautiful in, in human weather. Me too. I'm so pretty in human, human weather. weather. Human. <laughs> Never seen you in it. <laughs> Never seen you in no. human Wait, weather. Chicago is What if you were the alien summer, on right? earth? What if you were the one that's been here the whole time? And then your hair is beautiful in humid weather. I For mean, you to accuse me of being the alien while your eyes look like that is actually Would the alien bold. dress up like that as goth <laughs> or this? The alien would be hiding in plain sight. <laughs> Wait, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking about how you asked me why I keep calling you short out of nowhere. Yeah. It's because we were on FaceTime and I wasn't seeing you in person. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> You're, I wish you could experience what it's like to be a person seeing feet dangle. It's like, it's the most, it takes you. See, that's a really good answer. I was, it took there me a while an because I was like, no, because I always make fun of you being short. Your name is Little Esther. I, I don't think there's any been, there's, I have the hits. I have the hits that I make fun of people. There's something there. If there's black on my teeth at any point, point let me know. Listen, Look, if there's an eyelash falling into my nipple hair at any point, please let me Annie, know. Annie, I want to talk about this. Um, I don't like your tone. We have. <laughs> I don't like your tone. It it it, it, it involves oh, your lower happy. lash. Um, we cry about it. We, we cry. cry about having to put on lashes. We're so bad at it. So how bad we. It must be. Everyone lashes. has this trouble. Everyone right. must have this trouble. And then it's Annie so sends me a video of a guy named Gabe Wheatley who has no limbs, who puts on makeup. He has no, not only does he have no fingers, he has no arms and he's able to crush putting on the lashes. lashes. So, guys, I'm here to tell you it's me. How? <laughs> does he use his feet? No, he has, he doesn't have feet either. He has, he sets it up in his neck he's, and then he puts it, he'll like put it with his mouth. He'll put the glue on, find the video. Yeah, so Annie so, basically sent me this video and she was like, no excuse, bitch. We are so full of shit. So we're back to lashes. The lashes are back on. <laughs> I mean, He's amazing. we are just all trash. This is really mesmerizing. Oh my God. No, there's a guy, listen, I'm so into people that are like, if you notice people that are born with like a disability or something that you would call missing, they're always end up being better at things. Well, it's because oh, like they, they learn how to compensate like, yeah. Right. They can. It's like people who have no arms. If they have, they use their feet to do look a at bunch this. of shit. We can. Oh never my god! Do. Those foot fetish people are piping up. The good. look she at those feet. lashes. Perfection. That. That's so, so beautiful. Good. The rhinestone eye. Oh my amazing. god! He's a king. <laughs> He's <laughs> We're a king of lashes. Losers. We're useless. <laughs> anyway, everything hurts. It's just I'm wearing toilet contacts. <laughs> I'm How do very you feel? concerned. <laughs> you know it. You know what's funny? So the traffic again was. Like a nightmare, but I was like, I can't like road rage in black lipstick. Like I can't like, I can't. So I just was like at peace with it. We had a uh, Godfrey on yesterday on Tiger Belly, and he said it's you should, we should rebrand Gilbert it. or Godfrey. The no, God. no, not without the Gilbert. <laughs> the Godfrey. And he said that road rage is not real rage. It's passion for driving. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's convenient. It's like if you have a real passion for like the technicality of driving, that's where the frustration it's comes from. It's the most, okay, that's so not true because I've never been good at driving and I've had road rage. <laughs> but it's like, I think it's a control issue and it's like, what I always try to look at is like, why am I like expecting other people to drive away? Like they're just doing their thing. It's <laughs> nothing to do with me. Yeah. But it is, I think people save up all of their rage through life. Yes. And then they wait for this moment where no one 
Yes. Like, I would love to hear you just slurring away in your... I've never screaming. had a yelling... I've never had road rage. But wouldn't it be just so fun if that was your little secret? Just but it your little doesn't... heads popping up? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not what gets my... What do you rage out over? I, I don't... It's not rage. She doesn't have rage. I don't think I have rage. I, you've got to get... have... When is the most pissed off you've ever been where you've yelled at the top of your lungs? I don't... I, um, I need to think... But I, I do, not to deflect, but I do want to say that living in L.A. has made me hate driving. And I didn't realize it's just L.A. driving. Same. Until I, I have to drive now like an hour away for work. Join the club, bitch. But like I thought I would hate it. And because it's not a traffic drive, mm. I'm like... It's you so know, much fun. Yeah. I'm blasted by music. <laughs> yeah. I'm free. I'm by myself. Right. I stop at my Starbucks drive through. Like well, I am living life. You need to go on a road trip by yourself. You'll like it. It's I actually know. my favorite thing to do. It's so fun. It's You've like, done so, that? Yes. I used to love to drive from Santa Fe to LA, LA to Santa Tell Fe. Tell me about it. I wanna, I Somehow I think that you on a road trip alone is safe and Esther is not. I feel like <laughs> someone would just like take you your kidneys at a gas station. You gotta give her phone books to sit on. Uh, little <laughs> extenders. Little put some tuna cans together in the bottom of her feet so she can touch. But what, did you like stop and get like drive through fast food? Yes, well I do have a rule that um, I'm allowed one, a free lapse for me. So when you're in, uh, when you're sober, you're, which I, I don't even claim to be anymore. I don't drink, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but. Sober enough. Oh my God. Speaking of sober, I have a huge thing to announce. But she keep, drank oh, wine. Did you quit the alcohol you never drank? No, no. Can Wait, if you quit. <laughs> this is like when my mom quit drinking the same time I did. She was like, oh, it's been so hard quitting drink. I go, what? She goes, yeah, it's been hard. I go, mom, what, what did you quit drinking too? She goes, I quit right after you did. And it's been, I'm like, when did you drink? <laughs> you know, I was stealing my sober thunder. <laughs> what a was free lapse. Oh, my free lapse is always I can snort Adderall at, tar at uh Taco Bell's on my drives. <laughs> oh my that sounds, in Barstow. No wonder you love road trips. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yes. Somehow, yes. I, honestly, that sounds like the most relatable thing you've ever said. Thank you so much. Because I think that I have not snorted it, but definitely fucked with Ritalin in Barstow um, at a Del Taco Hell on my yeah. way to Vegas. You get it, bitch. You get it. The, something yeah. about the open road in the desert. Yeah, that makes you it just makes wanna, sense to me. That's after. the right. thing you relate to Annie the most about. <laughs> I, I, I just think it's just, I just There's think nothing it's else. a highly, it's it's an underrated but highly relatable statement. I, I think that on the surface, it may not look, seem like something people would do, but it is. Now I have, I will be <laughs> tell you the truth. I have retired snorting Adderall at this point because it does nothing. It doesn't help in any way. I realized it was just me again, chasing being bad. You know what I used to do when I said, okay, no more Ritalin? Um, I got really hooked on something that's not even supposed to be addictive, but it's this er thing that Herbalife and Nutrilife sells. It's called rhodiola. And I used to just take packs of rhodiola and it's supposed to be like good for you. You just get on that fucking, but start not only does it, rhodiola. it gives you diarrhea. So I felt skinny and then it gives you like a, <laughs> it feels like coffee. If diarrhea still at this point made me feel skinny. I mean, it's been so many years since <laughs> diarrhea has made me feel skinny. <laughs> I learned it'll hang there. It'll hang on. The bloat will hang. The bloat, will stay. <laughs> yeah. the bloat is gas. Um, Does no snorting Adderall make a difference in any way? No. Yeah. No. 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 It just what? It, it was just like fun. I just was like, I miss being bad. And I will say this, even though I have retired the snorting of anything, don't recommend it. Um, I did go and I got a cup of coffee, and that and the straw they used was so cute that I said. Maybe I'll just do one more blue rail. Get some <laughs> homework done. It was so cute. I was like, I would love to snort some Adderall. Because the straw was cute. It was so cute. Esther, This listen. story is not adding Esther, up. Esther, nobody thought you were going to uh, relate to this anyway. <laughs> nobody. You just said you had realized you had fun driving for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> You're in your early to mid-30s. What is the blue line? Why did you call it blue? Because the Adderall I would, would be a five milligram. <laughs> you know how George got burudangad in Colombia? Yeah. And it's that drug where you seem like you're acting normally, but you're actually being, you're, you're 
fucked up. What's right? cool is like George was like, as George was like blowing this guy, he was like really into it. And he was like, gag, gag. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder if we all burudanga at each other and happen. then just did did an episode. I wonder if oh, no. we would have control of what we were saying and what would actually If we come drug out. ourselves, we should try things that are not like crazy for you. I mean, I know that you're, you've dabbled in Dayquil. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how hard you're laughing. Because <laughs> it's pathetic. Because <laughs> you're pathetic. <laughs> How are we friends? It's really weird. I've literally, by the time I was your height, I'd already done all of these. Do you it's I'm weird. I always grade? forget it too. It's like, I was so sincere when I brought up Dave Quill and you guys just fucking bulldozed me. I was What did you excited. want to throw you a party? Oh my God. Her gateway drug. She's going to be on fucking ty Tylenol PM in no time. <laughs> you guys don't, you know, Z Quill? Oh, she knows the variations. But, no, this is really important. This is like I'm about to blow your mind. <laughs> I thought you were going to blow me. <laughs> Do you know z -Quil, where it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. It's literally the same exact thing as Benadryl. It's the same drug. They just mm -hmm. market it as z -Quil. And Benadryl is so much fucking cheaper and it's the same thing. There yeah, you it's have it. diphenhydramine. Yes. Did you know this, Coloco? Yeah. I like oh. that you're like taking <laughs> Well, you them didn't down. tell us. You just seem I like really that excited. you're taking them down, but what if you take them down and then you can't have your sweet, sweet Dayquil anymore? No, what no. drug are you going to do? I, <laughs> Amazon brand Dayquil is cheaper anyway. I want to take you to the Amazon and give you something. The Amazon. <laughs> I want to I want to I want to shoot a, you with a dart and have you oh, poison hallucinate dart frog. for six Poison dart frog. They're very cute, but they're very, very toxic, Esther. They'd kill us all. Clyde, your tits oh, I love are frogs. huge. I drew them in. Yeah, Don't you're, get oh too God, excited. Baby's learning. <laughs> you look like baby's learning, mommy. Well, you someone like was saying craft. I look oh, like yeah. the craft. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I think that was what I was going for. You look more like a like a like corpse. I do arts and crafts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is actually crazy. Did you guys know? Do you know why free trials renew without your consent? So they can get away with it. It's it literally a business scam yeah, out to evil. get you. And there's one way like to finally stop that and it's Truebill. Truebill is this new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need or want or that you just like forgot about. And on average, people actually save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies will make subscriptions hard to cancel. We've all had that, right? Like where you're like oh. supposed to cancel. They literally make it no, impossible. And I if go you go to, to their I site, the cancel button is the hardest thing to find. No, I go to use my credit card. They're like, you're overdrawn. I'm like, what are you talking about? I look. It's like, oh, I've been spending $7,000 a month on. <laughs> it's shady. It's shady, but they they fucking do it. Um but because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. You guys, go right now. Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. It could save you... I'm not kidding, thousands a year. Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. You know the dirty little not so secret about the bedding aisle is that while cotton might be the most popular fabric for sheets, duvets, and pillowcases, it's actually also the most damaging to our planet. And that's why we are so thrilled to introduce you to Etitude. By using 100% organic bamboo fabric, Etitude sheets save 500 times more water than cotton and produce 52% less carbon emissions. So they're comfortable for you and the environment. I love my Etitude sheets. I think that they are the softest, most highest quality sheets I've ever used. And you know what I love about the most? The coolness. I'm a, I run hot when I sleep. So these um, these sheets just really, really allow my body to breathe in the middle of the night. Uh, I mean, every spot is the wet spot in my bed. <laughs> That's why I need these sheets. You guys know I'm a lazy girl and I love to lay down. I have tried all of the like bedding that you've heard about and read about. This, I'm not kidding you, Attitude is my by far my favorite one. I recommend it to all my friends. And you can try it for 30 days. And you're not if you're not completely satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. Right now, you can get 20% off your order plus free shipping when you visit attitude.com slash Tuesday and enter promo code Tuesday. Remember, that's attitude as in eco attitude. Order today for free shipping and 20% off your order at attitude.com slash Tuesday. That's E-T-T-I-T-U-D-E 
dot com slash Tuesday, promo code Tuesday. There's this beauty vlogger who, and you know, beauty vloggers like on YouTube, they get so famous and they get so much and the beauty community is like extremely, they're, they're very woke community, way more so than I would say comedy. And I remember once she said something that I always think about when people don't like me online. And she said, thank God for that unsubscribe button. And so like, I always say that to myself, like when I'm like, Thank God that you're you can unsubscribe, you can unfollow. Thank God for that. What a concept! Like you are so le- like go. Yeah. <laughs> if you're mad at that, what for whatever reason? Well, yeah. it's always just like a control thing and trying mm-hmm. to like tell people. It's just like what what's the point of being alive? You know, I get. It's um, like, I, I didn't get a platform because I follow everyone else's like. Li- I'm not. I'm not even an actress. Like I am a comedian. I say my own words. Like and I, don't- I think this actually applies to like my experience as being like Asian American, but not Asian, not Asian American in the same way that other people are Asian American. It's like I'm a 1.5 or I grew up in Asia. My sensibilities are different than someone who was born and raised here. Hmm. And what they what they feel they need to gatekeep in terms of their Asianness, the culture, I don't feel like I need to gatekeep because it's like I grew up in a culture that was like, here, we share it. You want to wear a kimono and saya? A kimono and saya? Wear it. You want to dance the nickling? Do it. It, it. But that might not be the same for a Filipino born and right. raised here where they're like, no, my, you, you know, my culture is not your costume. Or they have a completely different set of ideas than me because right. they're seeing it through their upbringing mm. here. But I don't feel the need to ever like gatekeep my Asian-ness. And I, yeah. I think I do get in trouble there's a there's a rift there, and I feel very disconnected to some Asian Americans in that, that way. Feel that wow. way, right? But that then feel there's that people way. that you're resonating with that feel exactly like you. It's this. It's, so it's convers- like you just. It's like if you say what you believe, right? Yeah. Like, and you are true to like what you think is like right for you. Yeah. That's literally the only thing you can do because what's the point of fucking anything? Right, and it's 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 this. It's like when. When there was a group of Filipinos, scholarly Filipinos, say, for instance, or I'm sorry, um, Filipino Americans who were like, oh, let's add the X at the end of Filipina or Filipino. Let's do Philippine X. I have trans friends at home in the Philippines that I grew up with who are like, wait a second. We don't have pronouns in our language. You Americans don't get to tell us what we're supposed to call ourselves. Whoa. But in the meantime, there are people that do subscribe to it and some people that don't. So there's sort of this like back and forth about it, but it's like ultimately no one is correct and no one is wrong because we're all speaking from our own lived experiences. Yes. Yeah. And our lens and like what we value. It's like all your values. And I think it's just like, I just. It's like controversial, but I'll say it being that, you know, I grew up in Asia, but it's like, say for instance, the Ollie London thing, that kid who wanted to be, he was white, he he considered transracial. Does it feel fucking weird for me to see that? Yeah, it feels icky. But at the same time, do I know that Korea is the number one leading country in cosmetics to alter their eyes to to look more westernized and white? Yeah. They are. Well, it's just like, so yeah, I like, just feel like I don't want to tell like whether I don't want to say like to like Kim Kardashian, don't get your ass done. Like I'm a hippie. I would like in, in my perfect world, in my life, I have no Botox. I have no nothing. I like to be like to get as good with myself and my body as I can possibly be. If someone else wants to transition into another sex, right, that is so I so support whatever their fucking journey is. And I believe that whatever they want and they're going to handle it. It's not my business. It's not my business and to also stand up like, for anyone to say anything. Like also, I live my life to be kind to everyone and give everyone grace. That's mm-hmm. literally it. But it's like someone who's going to come Unless for they, you for saying that, you know, for saying something like that. It's like people don't stop and take a look at the fact that this kid Ollie London looks like he's mentally ill. Yeah. And that's yeah. the that that's ultimately what we were saying. And I think and you that yeah, you don't have to give him that he's Korea, you don't go like, all right, you're Korean and now you like, but you didn't have any of the struggles of the, it's just like, 
there's so many different Esther and I are friends and her big drug was Dayquil. Okay. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's like, I was doing fucking crazy drugs when I was 13. It's like, you can, you can have different experiences and still like appreciate the other yeah. person's life. And, and yeah. by the way, for the or record, not I'm not saying that my feelings are correct. They're just my feelings yep. from my own lived experiences. I will not gatekeep anything Filipino. She if won't you gatekeep want to- either. I mean, she's really just let it out. Let's be honest. <laughs> she's let a lot of people have it. If someone says something extremely offensive towards Jewish people, towards women, something, you know. I'm right here, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I want to approach them with love and, like, I want to help them understand my side from a positive place and mm. not be like, you're fucking sexist. Like, you, you know, I don't want to be angry if I'm passionate about something because this is the opposite. Like, the anger and the rage yeah, I, it makes me really uncomfortable. It, it is a very I don't American it's thing. It's not real. It's someone like literally going through their day trying to have a thing to make them feel like they're like, gotcha. And then I'm going to do this. Like, it's the same as the bloodbath girls. We can't like look at what they're yeah, doing. Like joke. what what they all want is our attention and us talking about them. So the bloodbath girls are now trying. I don't know what yeah. they're trying to do to me or whatever. I'm never watching it. I don't <laughs> care. Anyone that watches whatever their fucking bullshit video is and 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 agrees with them, please oh unfollow everything I've ever done. Get the fuck away from me. I literally am here to fucking get over myself, be good, make people feel good, make people laugh. If you don't want to get on board with that, get the fuck away from me. Like I will not be controlled. I never have been. I never will be. It's like fuck off. By the way, the best point ever made was about the name. Bloodbath when it's friends making fun of each other and it's a little bit of a period joke is cute. Bloodbath when it's about the victims of a fucking it's crime really is absolutely disgusting. Mm-hmm. That's really, really And bad. to say, That's one of the really comments bad. they said about us was like, serial killers are better than us. We're worse than serial killers because we don't apologize mm-hmm. to the victims. By the way, there's nothing to apologize to. <laughs> and the serial killers are not okay. They're never okay. <laughs> you are misogynist. Yeah. You are misogynist. You hate women. You pray and you try to make money off of the death of innocent fucking women. So how about that? How about that? Do you want us to fucking release that, bitches? Yeah. Do you want people to know that Ooh, about you? Drop that what shit are on we the doing? Patreon. We're showing girls that they can be themselves, get over yeah. their fucking trauma, love each other, be supportive, and speak their own fucking mind in a world where men tell us what to fucking say all the time, and we have to conform. We don't fucking do that. We talk about diarrhea, period blood, <laughs> and we fucking eat gross shit, all right? Fuck you. All like, during a pandemic. And we are, we are horrible. We, bull- we never bullied you once. We took yeah. the name down. We just were trying to be nice to you and you wanted more. You wanted merch money. You wanted Ugh. attention. All you want is money, clout, mm-hmm. and to look like victims. Well, you're not fucking victims, but you know who are? The girls you exploit for your fucking show that has 40 followers. So enjoy <laughs> your shitty little career. And you'll never get a hundred thousand fucking dollars from us. If you had asked for ten, by the way, you might have gotten. You might have gotten. <laughs> Mama has and, spoken. It's and, like enough. Like what? What do we want our followers to do? Not be themselves and scared and no. and and victims of their. We were all fucking molested in every hole except Esther. But her time will come. <laughs> Maybe during this episode. I had some things. Yeah, you had a couple things. That's true. I, for some reason, she hides them. I think that you hit the nail on the head, and I think that ultimately. We've not call it what it was, which is they've been bullies. You're you're bullying wow. us. You're trying to extort us. We know our power, and that's why we don't talk about you because you will be destroyed by our fans. We don't want them to feel bad. We don't want them to go against you. We want to just move on with the shittiest name ever. Kalila picked it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. George. George did. fucking did it. George does coke though, so we'll we'll give him a pass. He's a drug act- addict, and he eh. was drugged. Do you guys want to hear two girls talk about the same murders you'd heard everyone else talk about? <laughs> yeah. Who are calling us bullies out of nowhere that we've literally been protecting for months and months and months? Yeah. Do you hate our new name? So do we. Everyone fucking does. <laughs> We, we loved our it. name. It made sense. We could have coexisted with them. We actually were going to have them be our true crime correspondents, but they went around and told everyone we were thieves and liars and said we were doing things. We never did. They are unsafe. Mama. I don't I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! So go watch their show. If you like it and resonate with it, please give them your money. Honestly, give them you your guys, attention. Please. They please. Need, it seems like they really want to build an empire. Go follow them. Do whatever. No. Do it. Do, follow, it, follow do it out of charity. They got, you want to know it's why no sweat they got on our iTunes? Back. 
Because even after we changed the name, they still took it down vengefully. They they literally gave us more shit even after we changed the name. After we changed the name. And it's like, I don't even want to be mad because I shouldn't let anyone make me mad. But it's like, it's so fucking frustrating. We're biting our tongues, trying to yeah. help and protect them. And they can't stop. And we've been harassed and bullied. Harassed and bullied every day. they every, wanted like, a private apology from Esther because they made up a situation in their head well, where they thought Esther was speaking directly to them. That's what they really feel. That's like stalker that's weird. stuff. Made someone out there thinks you're speaking to them. That like is what made me feel unsafe. That's where I'm unhinged. Like, you're making up something in your head that I'm I'm threatening you. Or I think that. the line that they were upset about was like when and like one of our first podcasts, which we filmed months before we even they even acknowledged us, was you said um, like I'll we're the bloodbath girls. Let it be known, like. And and they let, let the court. It's been a bloodbath. Let the court see. Because she said she's gonna sue me all the time because I'm gonna kill her. Because it's bloodbath. Because we're friends that fuck with each other. Do you understand? I love it has this nothing guy. to do with you. Listen, angels, go yeah. for your life. Get over yourselves. Your life will be better. Okay. I work on this myself too. Okay. I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I want I want you to be successful. And I, but your mindset is not correct. Okay. Your mindset is paranoid, and it's not. It is not. It's not where we're coming from. And you want an apology? I'm sorry. I'll say I don't it. know what the fuck I'm apologizing for, but I'm sorry. No, I'm getting emotional because I do feel like I, I I think that anyone can relate to this. Like there's something in your life that you have to just keep a smile on your face uh -huh. and you can't you can let people truth, know what's yeah. going on behind the scenes. Yeah. But like since the day we started this podcast, this has been going on and we never talk about it because like like what women usually do, we just put a smile on our faces and like keep it going. And I, I'm just, there's something emotionally cathartic I, I about I think that this. what it is, Esther, is that we genuinely don't want to hurt anyone. Even no, like this is a comedy show. Yeah, like we've never set out to hurt anyone's feelings, step on anyone's toes. This was our whole our home project between three friends. We came up with a a name from the English dictionary that we liked. And that was the, once a death, movie. The death metal band that, that was exists. based on a band that is like you know in in. What we set out to do was just something light and funny and really positive. And what has transpired and has helping been women, helping such women. a bummer. And the fact that we've had to just take the high road and play nice and pretend like nothing's happening is what been. Are, you're right. It's 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 been a fucking frustrating process. And well, did I not? Did we not have a conversation where it's like, you know what? We should just do a thing and try to be as nice as possible. And every yeah. time we're about to do that, they send another threatening fucking email, some threat about something, or we've done this, or we changed the name on purpose. Like, stop watching true crime. Stop it. <laughs> you're paranoid. Stop. Well, what okay? about what? Get about a puppy. <laughs> Get a puppy, go look at the trees. It's beautiful out. It's beautiful out. What about the weeks or months that like after we changed the name because we were being threatened, like all a lot of our listeners were upset and they they were like, oh, I don't want to listen anymore because you changed your name. And we're just sitting here like, we didn't want to change our name. Like we were being harassed. And yeah. by we, the we way, we couldn't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. couldn't there was no anyone. taking of a name. We didn't know who you were, as we most people didn't. don't. You literally have a, I'm not even trying to be rude. You have a small following. It's very, very small. <laughs> it's very small. You know what we're doing? We're actually businesswomen that are getting together to write to, to a podcast that resonates with young girls, that makes them happy. Do you know what happens when I do my shows now, my live shows? Girls come up crying that they feel so much better about being molested mm -hmm. and what's happened to them because we talk openly about it. Mm -hmm. So keep shutting us down. We're so mean to women. Yeah. We're so mean to them and then go oh is there another girl that got murdered innocently that you want to bathe in their blood oh yeah. like what are you talking about and did we ever once say we don't want you to have the name do we ever care did it have anything to do we didn't know you existed until we already had launched and filmed the first few episodes so sorry we came up with the name before you existed i don't know what you're talking about there's no thievery no one's taking from you and it didn't take anything from you all it did was get you more attention yeah and honestly we're happy to share that attention yeah it's like look like Whatever trickle down followers that you get out of this, happy to have you see, ha happy to see you have them. We were gonna have you be correspondents, but we, you know who we don't have? People that call us liars and thieves and make up stories about us and bully us. That's who we don't have. Yeah. I'm sorry. This has been honestly my favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> good because, and I, and I really do cathartic. apologize for like my, I shouldn't be this heated because I don't, it's no. anger is not the thing. It's just, it's exactly what Esther's saying. It's like, we've been holding it in. Yeah. yeah. I, and like, I literally am like on the verge of tears. Like it, since you started talking about the Asian stuff, like I'm just so, it's such a shitty feeling to like hold something in and be, be harassed and be scared. And like, I don't know. It's just, 
and be told you're bad when your yeah. intentions were never like never bad at all. Right. I don't even know what to say. Like, I don't I don't know what to say. I'm just like glad we're talking about this. It's like therapeutic because this has just been really shitty. And I'm grateful that we have the show and that we fucking are. We're a huge success. Yeah, we're and guess a what? Success. We are. We're huge. No matter no matter side. what we I'm are. I'm in bitch star. She's the only one that exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we're f- whether this is Bloodbath, Trash Tuesday, Slug Town, Annie Esther, Kalila show, it's whatever we imbue it with, right? It's like our yeah. followers, our fans, we love them so dearly. They've latched, we've latched back. It's like this mutualistic love. And no matter what we are, no matter what name we have, we're going to do well. It also doesn't matter. It's like you can have the name. We don't care. We've done Just nothing stop but harassing be nice us, to guys. You. It's like we've given you A, B, C, D, and E, everything. Just Leave us the fuck alone. You got our iTunes taken down. That's more people that could have been inspired and felt good about themselves that can't have that now. So Also, when there was a third podcast, Bloodbath, like they bully the shit out of those they people did. too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, like it's just How an many English bad word. friends are there? There's five. like five. Yeah. Yeah. How many like hey babes hey are babes. there? 20. This exists. I used to do a thing called Sausage Party Presents with me and my friend Abby. It was called Sausage Party. It was we would take hot dogs and we would recreate scenes with it and we would make original content. And then I saw my friend, Kate Berlant, on the subway. She goes, oh, my God, congrats on the movie. I go, what are you, what are you talking about? She goes, oh, you're doing that movie with Seth, Seth uh, oh, Rogen. Yeah. Sausage Party. And I went, nope, that's unfortunate. Oh, well, you move on. You make something new. You keep moving forward. Nothing about our show gets in the way of your show in any way. Yeah, I think that if you spent all of this energy and legal fees into actually creating legitimate content, you would build an empire. But if you're continually continually Obsessed obsessing us, and harassing. using that energy to go after girls that are just trying to do a home project, um, it's gonna, it's, it's going to backfire. Esther, how many alone togethers were there in the world? Uh, a lot. Well, look, it became like the slogan for COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. COVID stole And there from was Esther. another. <laughs> we should sue COVID. COVID owes Esther an apology. COVID's been looking at you through the camera and yelling at you. <laughs> Yeah, it's just so it's this is a it was a it's been a really weird situation that I just didn't see coming for myself or for us. What I found the funniest, though, is they really had it up for you. (laughs) Poor little baby. I mean, that made me feel scared. Like I, you know, I've had stalkers and stuff like I that there's again, I'm right here. (laughs) There's protocol for that. Like, yeah, I, you know, had to do some things to make sure, you know, I, I just don't know who these people are when they start talking to you like they know you. I don't know. It's just this whole thing is it's really shitty. And I feel like people all all day, every day, there are people out there in their own workplaces where they have to grin and smile through something where they're being harassed or like threatened. Um, and it just is so shitty. And I wish there was something that we could do. And maybe even just sharing about it is helpful. But it's I don't know. It's just it's like I just feel really emotional. And, like I can't articulate. And yeah. I don't know. Like, I just am so grateful that Annie is here to, like, be our mouthpiece. Yeah. Because you're good at it. Like, say what I think we've all been feeling and afraid to say. All of this to say, by the way, stop complaining about the name change. We're going to change it into something else. We're like an art exhibit. Every two months. I'm doubling down. Trash Tuesday. Now I want to, like, stay. (laughs) Maybe we should just keep it. Honestly, maybe we should just keep it. The name doesn't matter. You guys are what matter. The three of us. I look, my, I wanted to pitch. Uh, to take the H out and just be blood bats. <laughs> <laughs> that oh was my, my pitch. That's great. We should blood do bleed baths. baths. Bleed baths. I want slug bath. Slug bath. Oh slug, yeah, slug bath. Slug bath is cute. Slug bath. Even Look, bath girls. I know I shit all over Esther and her mother. <laughs> and now I didn't know she's been being harassed online. I want to wow. get on track, but I'm also glad we this did feels this. So How about this? We hop off the horse and we switch gears, guys. <laughs> Wait, can like I call we're my very mom? good at. Do you guys feel like you have a cabinet full of acne treatments and skincare products, but you literally don't remember what half of them do? Because they don't work. Yeah, and it's so hard to navigate through skincare products because there are so many things marketed out there and you just don't really know what. I wish I had someone to just guide me. Girl, 
that's where apostrophe comes in, okay? Because apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Now, I've given science-backed oral myself, but <laughs> Annie, no, no. I after this makeup, I need apostrophe. I mean, this I'm going to be breaking out so hard. So I'm so excited I have it at my house right now. Apostrophe connects you with a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history, then snap a few selfies, and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats acne, and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals, like reducing redness, which is one of mine, wrinkles, and even dark spots. I have to say, like, I have done such a deep dive into the skincare world and you can get lost so easily and to just have one trusted place that is science backed is so important if you actually want to target your issues. Exactly, cuz not all products are for everybody. For instance, like I I have eczema, so my skin is very very sensitive. So I like the fact that someone can then tell me, "Hey, maybe retinol or things with like vitamin C" aren't the best for you. Maybe mm. less is more. Try this botanical oil. Try this or try this acne thing or try this for your eczema. I just need to be told so I don't go experimenting and fucking up my skin all the more and or messing so up my skin all the more. Too. It's like you waste so much money and then it's like you really do just have bins in your, I mean, yeah. every time I move, I'm throwing out so many products but, and you can't like share skin products. No. And by the way, you say you want to be told, but it's like you can't just walk into like, you know, any old store and have the person there tell you want. That's why apostrophe is so good. You're told by a freaking doctor, a dermatologist. Yeah. We have a special deal for our audience and you can save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash Tuesday when you use our code Tuesday. And this code is only available to our listeners. And to get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Tuesday and click begin visit. Then use our code Tuesday at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. I That's can... A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash Tuesday. And use the code Tuesday to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring this podcast. Is it still summer? Because <laughs> there are a lot of tents being pitched in my household. <laughs> That's right. This episode was sponsored by Blue Chew. You guys, confidence can take you far in life, and it can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is super simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. So there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Boing, 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 boing. They always say, <laughs> they always say first impressions are important. But on this podcast, we say, what about lasting impressions? <laughs> I have to say that there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you confidence where it counts. If you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a very special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TUESDAY at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code TUESDAY to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Ladies, Blue Chew is exclusively for men, but the end result is something you'll both enjoy. So get your man to sign up. I have a special goth food, guys. We'll let Esther open it and see what it is, and then everybody else gets to eat it. Why what is a goth food? I'm targeted. Esther, you need to accept if responsibility it's like a bat. for what you are. If you it's have like to a accept, bat. You have to accept responsibility for what you are. Which is what? A walking, uh, tiny Esther, little target. Esther, your, your reaction looking at it will be more than their reaction eating it, so that's why it's fun. Oh, I'm really scared. I'm really, I'm now Just I'm don't drop okay. it. I'm about to eat it I'm not floor. scared it's not going to attack me. It oh might. my god. Oh my god. That's really no, bad. Okay. You guys That's are fucking really horrible. That's people. really bad. All right, hold on. You're actually, that's you like guys? literally like worst nightmare example <laughs> that like no one would ever do. But like, I'm in shock. 
Okay, I'm not here's hungry. what I have to say. You know what I'm here's not what is I'm say. not hungry for my banana anymore. That's a fucking tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's kind of cute too. Why is it so? Okay, wait. I'm gonna have to eat this. I might have to call Joe. I have to leave. I'm gonna call Joe Rogan. I think I have to leave the room. It's I not alive. I... It's a tarantula. It's not alive. I had two tarantulas, one named Boris and one named Charlie. They're very sweet. Oh my god. I'm gonna see if Rogan will coach me through well, this. I don't. This can't happen anymore. <laughs> this is. It's not... gotta keep. Ha- Do you understand? That is why it has to keep happening. <laughs> no. No, Annie, no. They do worse on the challenge. Oh my gosh, she's doing it. Oh my gosh, she's doing it. I don't really, like, I don't want to touch it. Oh my God. I'm not, like, interested in it. Annie's punk rock. She, she'll do it even if Annie, Annie. Oh, it's crunchy. Not chocolate. It's not (laughs) chocolate. Nothing chocolate about it. Yeah, it's not chocolate. What? You lied to her? Oh my God. Just dried. I'm gagging. Just a dried tarantula. I just gagged. She's throwing up in her Lady Gaga shirt. Please throw up. We need the views. Again, it's like there's no taste. There's nothing tarantula e about it. It's just something about like you Fear thinking is not it was a factor. chocolate. And then after you bit into it, he told you it wasn't chocolate is like making me really sick. <sighs> Do you know what's kind of sicker? You know what's kind of sicker, Esther? What? The Kalila, like, these were her pets. This is like if we ate our dogs. Mm-hmm. Like, Kalila, you sick bitch. These were your pets. I used to feed them crickets. You want to know their, their names were Boris and Charlie. Oh I have pictures. God. I'll send you guys pics. But I it's like. Esther needs a pic. I'm. Can I just apologize for laughing so hard to the audio listeners? Uh, seeing Esther being the only one who did not eat that and react the most <laughs> is kind of hilarious. To me. Oh, that's smart, Annie. Give me some of your banana to chase have, it with. Oh. Oh, like, are you gonna go home and like kiss Todd with that mouth? Here, here, I got my own Annie. I'm gonna suck his dick. I was literally so hungry and so oh. excited when I got my banana. And now I, I the thought of I cannot it. believe the transformation of you and bananas. <laughs> I've worked through my anger and now I'm just proud of you. I feel like it's your favorite fruit now. It, I like it, but I don't, I'm so hungry right now. And watching you bite into the dried, non-covered tarantula, like I just am so scarred. How do you feel? I feel great, but I'm having a breakthrough with you because <laughs> I feel like it was annoying me when you were like adapting and getting better at things a little bit. Cause I was like, why was she like so difficult about it before if she could eventually eat a banana? But I actually am fucking proud of you. You're actually breaking down boundaries. Mm-hmm. You're getting better. You guys, the new and improved Esther 2.0. She's also, Esther, I want to walk Esther through. Now. She's big Esther. I want to walk through the psychological um, terror that you're feeling. Um, how? What are your thoughts on eating crab or lobster I or don't. shrimp? I but don't do, eat any. Is of it those. repulsive to you? Yeah. When you see people eat it, or when you see it on a table, just lobster meat. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not repulsed, but I'm just like, I don't want that. Cause I'm not repulsed because my fiance yeah, eats. Yeah, Dave likes crab He loves that crab Right, so it. essentially all Dave is doing is eating sea spiders. That's exactly it. They have an exoskeleton. They are the same family. We actually call them bugs. Like when we go lobstering, we, get, we call lobsters bugs because they're... You're not helping her. They're but insects. Certain, they're water insects. But certainly you must know that like people, it's a very common fear to be afraid of spiders. I'm not letting. Yeah, but it's a you. it's it's dead. But That's like, the famous argument. Uh-huh. Oh, if you see a spider, it's good because they're eating the bugs. But I don't mind the bugs. It's the spiders. Okay, that, bring her bugs next no, week, no, guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> if I brought, no, I wouldn't do this because I don't want to terrorize the poor tarantula. But Not you would never you. hold a tarantula <laughs> in your hand. Like in fifth grade, they never said, "Hey, hold this tarantula." Or some somebody bring that. What in. What about a big snake like from slavery? Uh. If it was like a snake that wasn't gonna kill me and like people- None round. of them are gonna kill you. Snakes kill people? No, no, people. no, but none of the things that we brought to you were gonna kill you. No, but that's what I'm saying is if the snake didn't wasn't a threat to my life, I wouldn't be super creeped out by a snake. I like lizards. Like I think we all have yeah, our do. thing. Oh, I have my thing. Yeah, if you, if, I, you if I see even one, when, when we were, in, when I was in Hawaii last time, I was in the middle seat. Um, sandwiched between um, my sister That's and my worst her boyfriend. More than a spider. <laughs> Big <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> and we I, we were driving back from the North Shore, and I look over at the AC vent at, right in front of my knee, and I see a cockroach just go inside the AC Ooh. vent. 
I almost killed the entire car. I freaked out so hard that I sat on top of my sister and I was threatening to open the was car it the, door was it as the, it was going 80 was it miles the roach, an hour. Like spray that was coming out of the air conditioning. The roaches getting... um, do to me what I think um, spiders do to Esther, which is like this visceral, this need to just run. Whether even if it kills me, I yeah. just need to get out of that car. Yeah. Well, you realize like people do say that could be a thing, like. A d in your DNA that because of like, like a spider could have killed an ancestor. Or like, a, you know, I, like that's a real thing. Well, I have one. Well, and they say that like pregnant women are especially afraid of spiders because spiders have something that can like harm the baby. Like there, there is truth to this. Are well, you telling us that your ancestors were, were killed, killed by, by spiders? By the smell of fire, by spiders, <laughs> by the texture of bananas. <laughs> Can I? You can't disprove it. <laughs> Can I give you my history on cockroaches? Yes. The reason that I feel a need to jump is because my whole life I was terror terrorized by cockroaches. So in the Philippines, we have the aerial ones that fly. So when I, anytime I was walking around the house or even in asleep, they would jump into oh. my hair and I would have to crunch it in my hair and then all of its juices would come down. And if they didn't, if I didn't kill them beforehand, my sister and I would wake up and we would have these holes in our shins because they were carnivorous. Uh, what? And they would just eat at our shin meat. And when I came oh. to America, they promised me they were there weren't any big roaches here. So I was like, oh my God, we've made it. America doesn't have big roaches. And now roaches. you're living with one. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> and so our first apartment, there were these tiny little roaches. And I was like, oh, that's nothing. American roaches are cool. But there were thousands of them. And every time I, I went to school in my backpack, when I opened a textbook, there just would like, like, roaches everywhere and they would tease me they'd be like oh dang girl like where do you live you brought roaches to school i would bring them to the swim practice they were fucking everywhere so roaches have terrorized my Listen, life i had crabs in college we've all been through it okay <laughs> that's I've why you love crabs legs. now i still eat them by the way everybody it was 200 dollars she gave me everyone's been wondering oh yeah and she there's, about 20 left. there's about 20 dollars <laughs> left oh we had a feast i have a question is your vagina like is europe vagina is your vagina like Does where poop is come it? Out of it no like, <laughs> because mine's right here do you I'm ever like emotional. do you remember like guys like in the early days they thought it was like here mm -hmm. but it's like deep like, well, I've gone really now. far back. Is yours is like in there, right? Yeah. It's Some between my girls yeah. aren't. Mine is. Are you ever surprised by like how it's far back? But um, what do you mean surprised? Like, did it move while I was sleeping? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I feel like mine is like really down there. All right, pull it out. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, no, I want to see like are ours in the same place? Here. There's, here's is, mine. Guys, I don't mind the hair. That but Esther mine's right is here. Asking to see my, the vaginas. hole? Right. Oh my God, she's touching right it. Right here. I, I want to say that. Okay. I just, ah! Give me your finger. Give me it's it's. Give me one finger. It feels like the Twinkie from last week. It's right here. That's the hole. That's the hole. Yeah. That's really forward. Will you feel mine? <laughs> yeah. All of this just so someone can touch your pussy. Come here. Is it here? No, that's that's my butt. It's yeah, it, Esther, it's normal. Are you sure? I guess no one wants to touch my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's. Right here. Let me see. Okay. I think I'm okay. I, okay, I think I'm okay. all the audio listeners, everybody in the room touched each other. Everyone's pussy is, is in the right place. The I didn't touch Kalila's because I want it to be really special when I touch hers. <laughs> for the first time. Candles you don't want have me to be, to be lit. there? No, no, no. Esther's going to be holding the camera. and <laughs> There'll be no petals will, uh, on the bed. <laughs> Esther will be placing the petals. But that's, I'm not making that up, right? Like guys used to think it was like in the front. Well, I think it's because know. the the... The placement of the clit is but probably, the clit is yeah. more in the front, and that is the one they really need to be looking for. <laughs> um, guys, Pete and George um, said that um, since we're having a special goth episode, that I should read you one oh, of my yeah. poems. <laughs> oh, another poem? Yes. Yeah. Is this a new one? What year was this? These are all teenage poems, guys. By the way, I think you should read one an episode. I'll write one. I'll yeah, try to please. Write a genuine one. I know you don't like the rhyming ones, so I'll steer clear no, from the rhyming rhyme. ones. Do everything you want. Look, I like to rhyme in high school. My rhyme. gosh. Oh my God. We can turn it into a rap. Esther, drop a beat. <laughs> I feel like you can. Can you drop beats? Schools okay, are this great. one doesn't. In District 68, it's time to celebrate. Oh my Join God. and participate. I said schools are great. There's not a nerdier <laughs> rap of all time. This one is called The Unfeeling. Oh my God. 
Esther, are you paying attention? Okay. No, it's better. I'm than already not so bored. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear the poem. I'm just being honest. I feel like my makeup matches this poem. Please look me in the eye when I'm reading this, Annie. I'm putting my necklace on. For even in the liveliest corner, on the brightest hour of the year, when my pockets are fullest, the sun is at its highest, the breeze is at its gentlest, and the untroubled croon of my friend's laughter envelops the mood and sits against a backdrop of a joyous enormity. I am defunct. I am dead. Oh, I I like the message. <laughs> I no, you're do. dead. Make like a dead person and never write another poem. The message um, was the, mes <laughs> the message. If you could make like a corpse and not be able to use your fingers anymore, that would be great. Is is the message like even though life is happening and all these things around me are going seemingly good, I'm it doesn't matter. I'm still dead inside. I'm depressed. Oh my god. Of course you like that. <laughs> oh my I god. I think it was beautiful. Thank you so much. Can um, I buy it off of you? <laughs> Yes, it's a hundred thousand dollars. I think I tried to kill myself three days later. I know oh, you're like left. You're like I sent this bomb out to everyone. Why did no one come to my? House? What is that thing, um, George? When you um, like the, the antique road show, when there's a story behind it. Uh, provenance. No, oh, see, that's the provenance. Of course, the provenance of the poem is that three days later I try to kill myself, guys. So if you want to purchase the poem, let NFT me know. NFT is coming soon. Yes, <laughs> NF. Uh, please don't write that again, tease. No, no, it was good. I liked it. I appreciate your poetry. I love a good teen poet too because it's there's so much in it. There's so much heart. We're so much more emotional and dramatic mm -hmm. when we're teens. It's really weird. Well, as someone that's never grown out of your teen years. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> no, I really infantize you. I don't know if that's the word. I infantilize. Infantilize you. Yeah, of course, there's a fantasy involved. <laughs> um, when I we wish did that Dave show, would. I walked you to your car. Like, I do not look at you as someone that's able to, like, oh, I know. And I cross the street without holding your grown up's hand and looking both ways. I recognize that you do it, and I do not stop you. <laughs> I fully am like, yeah, no, you should walk me I'm like, do you need me to grab? I'm like, I'm carrying her. I'm like, come on, Esther. <laughs> it really is your instinct. And I just, I didn't want you to notice that it was happening because I wanted it to keep happening. <laughs> oh, I, okay, I just heard a philosophy that we're already dead. And if you just assume you're already dead, how your life could be more free mm. and good. Well, that sends yeah. me somehow into a panic. Does it? <laughs> I feel like. Our friend Jenna has a tattoo that doesn't it say like, you'll be dead? Something like you're that. You're going to be dead? Yeah. That's a little, if you're reading this, <laughs> it's like this ring. <laughs> Jenna, you bitch. But <laughs> Seven days later. I, I feel like it's a similar thing of, okay, so let's say you're afraid to do something, whatever. You're going to be dead soon anyway, so why not just do the ask the person out or, you know, whatever it yeah. is that you're so scared of? Well, you're going to so die. That's teenage for that to be the thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> to prom. Well, is there something that you are scared to do, but if you tell yourself, I'm going to be dead one day, like, I'll do, I'll just do it. Yeah, when I let you touch my yeah, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not really afraid of many things, but I think because I do kind of live that way. I'm afraid of many things. A lot more than it would seem. I'm um, a lot less afraid now that I'm on Lexapro. Yeah, I think I'm going to get on that level. Yesterday it's or the, la last week in therapy, she was like, it's time. Really? <laughs> it is. She, yeah, <gasps> I'm, gonna, I'm seeing a psychiatrist in, in September because I think that her thing was how many days out of the year are you willing to suffer? Mm. And I said, you know, she's like the last couple of years of your life. She's like, how many days are you willing to give to that suffering? I'm like, okay. Touche, bitch. I have a, I have an alternative option to pose for both of you. Yeah. No, get on your Lexapro and enjoy it for a little while, okay? And then I'm not on it yet. And then in in five weeks, I don't know how long it is. Wait, are you gonna get certified? I'm getting certified. No, to be a hypnotist. No way. Yes, hypno motivation, hypnotic recollections. I don't know what any of these are yet. I just got the box. Oh, please let me be your guinea pig. I'm going to guinea pig the fucking shit out of both of you guys. Now, this is an issue. <laughs> it's DVDs. I have to hypnotize <laughs> it. I have to hypnotize my computer into having a DVD player. <laughs> there it is. I thought these weren't real. <gasps> oh, it's like a chart. It's one of the things. <gasps> oh. You are getting taller. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I'm how gonna exciting. Get, I'm, gonna, I'm taking like eight hour classes. Like, Are you serious? Yeah, and like why do it. you want, 
Because you, you can't hypnotize yourself, right? No. I mean, maybe you can. I don't know. I'll find it's just out. your intuition. George is nodding. I just, okay. So I've been talking a lot about, yeah, I guess you can hypnotize yourself. But I've been, hypnosis has like really helped me so much. And so many people are coming up to me after shows and stuff. And they're like really interested in it and stuff. And I want to like, I think there's just something I can do with it that's like melding what I do, which is being funny and hypnosis somehow. And like, I just, I don't know. I just have a vision of some things. I think like, how could it hurt if I learn it? Yeah. But it's really helped me so much. It's been so cool. I'm telling you, I don't have, my jaw is not tense anymore. Oh, wait, I can I make fun of your TikTok real quick? Fine. <laughs> You're so dirty that you wore gloves to go into your own mouth. That's not why. It's because the gloves make it feel better. More like a Can I? Dick? I will. If we have Were gloves, you I'll put my hands in your mouth right now. Manipulating no, for your it. TMJ pain? Yes. yes. Esther, do my TMJ because it's still sore, but it's like, I'm telling you, I'm not like the clenching. Well, let's is like see over. if this is... So I did a TikTok showing how I go into my own mouth. I was just, yeah. I was like, I wonder, like, is she, is she, do you think your mouth is dirty or your hand? I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Esther is hovering above Annie. Oh she God. is right about, she's oh using God. her right hand. She's moving to the left side of Annie now. Okay. And she is sticking her left thumb into the right side of I mean, Annie's jaw. Thumbs do not go far enough back. <laughs> Commit to it, Esther. Go all the way back. So Are your fingers too little? I'm not going to bite. You think I'm going to chomp down? <laughs> no. If it was your deck, I would. <laughs> She's re-entering Annie's mouth. Is this what you're mm -hmm. trying to manipulate oh, the up. masseter muscle? How's it I'm feel, sorry. Annie? Is is it getting there? Okay, Annie's giving me the thumbs up. Seems like she's really getting that mus masseter mm -hmm. muscle finally. Did I do anything? Like how how did I do? It was good. I mean, it was light. You were more scared than me, which I feel like <laughs> is not usually the practice. <laughs> I don't, I'm not usually the one coaching the massage, massage therapist into it. Imagine an, as a nurse, how did I do asking her patients that? I mean, Esther saying she's going to nursing school is one. I'm like, I've never wanted to dare someone to do something more. Yes, Esther. To nursing school she goes. Kyla, how did I do? From where I was standing, it seemed as though at first you were a little hesitant. I wanted to be gentle. You know, I'm go it's very, pr I'm violating her. I didn't want her, I wanted her to feel Esther, safe. Esther, I'm wide open. I was, I was, yeah. Light, my, my. Jaw was behind my ears. Let's just say that, okay? <laughs> what Amazing. would you hypnotize me and Kalila for? Oh, my God. You? <laughs> the, I, I don't know yet, but it'll be fucked up. <laughs> let's just say you'll be eating spiders. Oh. Um, <laughs> let's just say you'll be... <laughs> with a fucking smile on her face. <laughs> She's going to be like, someone put a fire. I want you to smell smoke. <laughs> Do you want to call your mommy? Okay, so I'm on my podcast, Mama. And... Oh, I wanted to, I was telling them that I got to the bottom of why you were telling my sister-in-laws I was infertile. So I asked you on vacation, I said, mom, why did you tell people that I couldn't have kids? You want me to really tell the truth? Say, exa say the yes. exact truth. Because you had so much sex and never got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Annie Letterman, how do you Mr. know that Annie had so much sex? Because she tell me. <laughs> Is that, was it weird for her to tell you that? All right, all right, I can tell, I'll tell you a story. Oh and my Annie God. will not be embarrassed by this story, I promise. I'm, I'm so, filling with she, blood. She invited me to Brooklyn to help her move, I think, or clean up her apartment or something. It was the first apartment you had in, in Brooklyn. It was my third apartment, but yes, I did. I brought you just to help me clean it. Well, I wasn't even moving. I was just like, oh, my room's messy. Mom, come clean it. All right, okay. I well, know you're into right. it. Where you live, those two guys, right? Yep. And Mike and, and uh, Dan St. Germain. So I slept in your double bed with you, and I had to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and I slipped on some lube. <laughs> she slipped on Astroglide. <laughs> Are you serious? I have a picture of her cleaning up Astroglide on my floor. I'll find it. All right, well, I'm going to go. I love you. Does anyone have any right. more questions? I mean, I, millions. <laughs> Now's your chance. What do you think of, of her wild childness? Don't ruin my Annie's streaker. Annie's always been very conventional. Very, very conventional. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you've sent me some really Whatever. sweet some really sweet texts recently. You're very proud of me. Aww. I am. Really? Yeah. It's really like I'm really I'm getting everything I want in life. It's very weird. Like my mom sending me a text like they're dream texts. What? What do you have in your eyes? Do you have, like... Uh, <laughs> I have um, contacts, but I drop them in both in the toilet. <laughs> so I think I'm going to get pink eye, so but it's worth it. Infected. Yeah, it's worth it. It's yeah. a podcast. It's yeah. worth it to get 
to get eye infection. Wait, mom, how about remember when I was like, uh, you were like, podcasts are so boring. And I was like, oh, my God, what podcast do you listen to? What was your answer? I don't remember. You said, I've only listened to yours. (laughs) 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 Wow, you should do roast battle. Um, All right. I love you, mommy. All right. I'll call you later. Bye. Bye. I like your podcast. Well, it's the only one that exclusively talks shit on you. So you better like it. but I do like it. <laughs> I know. She was talking about my solo before. All right. I love you. Aww. Bye, Mama. Bye, Mrs. Annie. Bye, love you. I would love to do a, like a full-blown sit-down interview with your mom. That I, would be I think so we should fun. do that with all of our... We should have your mom, your mom, and my mom on these chairs to just replace us for an episode. Oh, that my mom would be so nervous about that. My mom, too. But she would freeze. But also very into it because all of our moms, I think... Pretend to be nervous. My mom's not into entertainment. Your guys' moms are like her fans, fans of entertainment. Yeah. But my mom, my whole family just wants attention. I brought my brother up. I did Caroline's. By the way, everyone that came out to the show is like, it's amazing. Like when you go back on the, it's you're going to see. It's like, it's a whole, it's a special thing. Like I'm so glad we're resonating with you guys. It's like fucking, wow. it's such an honor to perform for the Sluggies. It's like unbelievable. It's really something going on. But um, you brought my, your brother on My stage. brother was, my older brother was there and I just knew he was going to heckle. So once he started talking, I was like, do you want to do stand up? And he went, well, oh, okay. And then came up immediately and then tried to do a set and was like, are you oh, still laughing whoa. at me? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. You have to no do it for a really long time. Way. Yeah. Wow. How bold. I can't believe he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll come up. My whole family is, yeah, I'll come up. Max like sticks in the back, but he wants to come up. Wow. Oh my That's gosh. Incredible. My mom would be on a plane back home <laughs> to, the to Cebu. Yeah. You know who I would have in place of my mom is Bobby's mom. Oh. She is a personality. She should have her I've own show. I've never met show. her. I would love to Ryan. meet her. Jeannie, yeah. Jeannie's a fucking Ooh, G. Oh, Jeannie's a good She's name. She's the best. Mom. Oma's What's the best. your mother's name? Meritas. Meritas? Yeah. Does, oh, she, does she watch our show? Because my mom watches, Annie's mom watches. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She watches it. And so does my stepdad now. You want to hear a text that I um, got from him? Yeah, This will make you feel good. Which is like the weirdest thing because my whole life he's always been like, you really are, um, what a waste of a good brain is what he's always told me my whole Whoa. life. Whoa. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Roger has his feelings. He's always like, you just you could have been a scientist. You could have been this. It's Aww. not. It's actually a compliment yeah. if you look at it. It yeah, is. It's like, it is. We really like take things. Yeah. He's to. probably not wrong. He said- I am very pleased with you. I wasn't sure at first, but you've really found your ni- your niche now. Mm-hmm. I always liked your independence, but now I'm even more impressed. I love you, Wench. Oh, that's it. That's so sweet. Wench, that's mm-hmm. so cute. Can I read you my mom's nice? Yeah, text? I wanted to ask about that. Okay, so she goes. I forgot to tell you when I was trolling you on the internet. I listened <laughs> to a podcast you did uh, at the beginning of COVID. And I have to tell you, you are absolutely hilarious. I couldn't stop laughing except to cough and blow my nose. Oh, my God. I'm so proud of you and what you've accomplished, sweetheart. It's all you, no one else. Oh, that's oh the Annie. Cry. This is like our podcast is good, you guys. Our, we're like, finally getting our parents' approval. No, for real. Like For the first really, time. Actually, yeah. Tiger Belly didn't do that for me. I mean, I've always had your parents' approval. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the night my mom came to our show? <laughs> this is amazing, you guys. My mom came to watch me and five of my, five my friends do stand-up. And when asked who her favorite one was, she said, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? I was so good. Like, it really was very like, funny. I was on that night. Let's that's really your answer? <laughs> like, I, could, I was shocked. My set was half your set, too, though. Oh, I then was you were, you you, were part of my set. Yeah, yeah, that was really fun. That was It was the night that we all – it was right a few days after we all found out Brody passed away. Oh, and so I think it was, it was like, that day. Esther. It might have been. And we were just like, we can't do this. And then we're like, let's just do it. So we were all together. And my mm. mom was in town. And yeah, it was, it was, it ended up being, I mean, I rambled on stage and I don't know what I said, but it was That was fun. really good. My, was it was, really good. anyways, my mom discovered her favorite comedian that night. <laughs> so that's cool. I've always had with parents that have trouble, like being vulnerable with their children. They always like go through me. I'm like the conduit to that. I don't think that's what this is. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so I much. I want to end on a positive note since we, we had some highs and lows, some peaks. Um, what a ride. I, I hope this whole podcast is edited out and this is five minute episode. It's a five minute episode. It's just Esther walking in. <laughs> <laughs> For five minutes. <laughs> yeah. 
Very slow, it's slow motion. Whatever was left. It's whoa. just you fingering both of us. <laughs> <laughs> it is the juiciest. <laughs> I want to say that we've been doing this now for what, like six months? And dare I say, I've never been prouder oh of God. something that I've even taken part of. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we were just three friends on FaceTime saying, hey, why don't we do this? And not only did we do it, we followed through and we still have a good time doing this. We're so silly. And we made we made a thing, guys. And I'm really proud of you guys mm -hmm. and I love you a lot. And I hope we get to do this for a very long time. Yeah, to I'm going to cry like because I do feel like I'm so annoying and I'm like, do you hate me now? <laughs> Esther, no one hates I you. I just took myself out of the group chat and it works perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally all I needed to do. Like I feel the same way, but you guys know I'm like such a sucker for like girls hanging out and like making money in business and like speaking your truth and owning your like 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 what you said like you shout out about being molested and like the way that that had the, the impact that, that has on other people like that not just you with the bell <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean i, just, I really know how to beat a rape horse, don't i <laughs> honestly that might be my favorite thing about the three of us that i think we all have in common is is being confident about our fucked up lives and our flaws and like sharing that so that if someone else feels that way too they don't yeah. have to feel so bad if they have nipple hair or if they're nervous that their vagina is a little further back than it should be honestly if you don't have nipple hair you should feel ashamed of yourself <laughs> and i recently you. met a bartender at a rooftop hotel who was like oh i love your i love your show and i was like oh, of course it's tiger belly this guy is like super yoked he's bald he's like a break dancer and he was like no i love uh, trash Tuesday." and i was like Thank you so much. No, it's fun to tell boys about diarrhea and stuff. It's like fun for them to know. It's good to just be ourselves in front of people. Yeah. I love that we have like boy slugs. And yeah. Yeah. So really... with that said, no matter what our name is, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's the three of us. And we're going to have fun doing this for a very long time to come. So go fuck yourself. Is this a, <laughs> is this a weird time to tell you guys I, I quit? <laughs> I can't stand you. I hate the show. Anyway, I got to go. <laughs> I'm joining Bloodbath. They need a We third. love you guys so I'm much. Cry. We'll see you next week. I'm Bye. I'm going to cry all the way home. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna, my eyes are going to be sealed shut with pus. <laughs> oh, wow, am I going to get that? You're so fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes. <laughs>